Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Training's Advanced Financial Modeling Enhancements to the Core Model. In this segment here, we will build a detailed revenue segment buildup based on the available information from Walmart's 10K filing, which we have already inputted here for you. This is a little bit more precise of a methodology and a little bit more detail into how we believe Walmart will do trying to further isolate the true drivers of growth for Walmart's revenue. Compare this with how we have built the revenue projection, the sales projections from an income statement from the core model in which we use relatively simple growth rates. At the end of the day, it all boils down to growth rates, but it depends on how much detail you want it to give. In an ideal world, we might even be able to calculate for Walmart the number of candy bars they will sell and then gross that up for every single product. Of course, that is not going to be realistic by any stretch of the imagination, so therefore, we will have to rely on the public available information that is disclosed to us in Walmart's 10K filing. Let's now take a look at our revenue segment buildup. And let me quickly walk you through the methodology in terms of how we will apply this as this is going to be a lot, a lot of tedious number crunching and data. There's going to be a fair amount of numbers that we go through here. It might even take you twice to go through this video to fully understand exactly what we did and the flow of the calculations. So I will do my best to slow it down a little bit to always try to reiterate what we are trying to calculate at any given point. Let's take a look at our file. And I will just do a quick freeze frame. And let me quickly go over the methodology of how we're going to calculate our revenue segment buildup. Ultimately, what we want to do is we want to calculate our sales per square foot per store. And then we're going to roll that all the way up back to net sales for the entire company. The first thing we'll do is we will input our store count, which, by the way, we've already got here. What we'll do is we'll input the store count and we'll calculate the percent growth trends over the last 10 to 11 years. We'll use these growth rates to then estimate the new projected store count in the future for the next five years. And then once we are done with that, the second thing we'll do is we will input net square foot per type of store. Why is this important? We've already inputted that here for you, by the way. That's important because we have Walmart stores, Sam's Clubs, and in that case, Walmart stores are significantly larger, typically the super centers, maybe larger than the wholesale stores, the Sam's Clubs, and therefore, we want to figure out how large each store is on a square footage basis. Similarly, we will calculate the average net sales, net square foot per actual store, calculate once again growth rates, and then from these growth rates, we will estimate what we believe the new square footage will be per type of square, uh, per type of store. And why is that important? Because even within the Walmart segment, from time to time, what you'll see is uh, they might take a neighborhood center or a discount store and convert it into a super center or whatnot. And we want to be able to capture those fluctuations. Finally, what we'll do is we will input the sales, which we've actually got down here, for the entire Walmart, and we're going to do a per store type. And then we're going to take that and then we're going to drill it down to sales per square foot per store type. Again, calculate our growth rates and ultimately project the net sales per square foot per store. And then once again, we were going to take all of that and drill it back up for reverse all our calculations for the actual projection period. So here's what I'd like you to do. Let's first go to cell F15. F15, what I would like you to do is please select from F15, shift down and right arrow through to O17. Again, from F15 down to O17. And what I'd like you to do there is let's put in a simple percent change formula. So you will say equals, control up arrow twice. Actually, let me zoom in for you on this. Make sure you have the whole field selected. And I will say equals, control up arrow twice to F9, divided by E9 minus 1, and then hit a control enter for me. And you should now have 3.1% for the first one. These percentages, let me show you, will now carry through, and it should be at 44% in cell O17. In cell I8, let's bring in and compare we're not going to update our initial projections just so we can keep the same numbers. But in I8, what I want you to do is say equals control page down to the segment and it get you to P44 and hit enter. So again, 
on the income statement, cell I8, let me zoom in for you there, equals segment P44. Then I want you to take this number, shift right control R to column M, 2010, and now you can compare these numbers and how similar they are to your initial projections. Very, very close. Well, let's format this properly. Let's format it uh, and make it white. So first thing I want you to do is hit control shift M, which is our shortcut for our money formatting, our number one number with one decimal without dollar sign. So again, if I hit alt S, F for Wall Street training, add in two of our macros. Formatting, that number one is the control shift now, M. You look at this, the point here is you compare your projections that you initially estimated based on simple percent growth rates in our core model module. Compare that with our detail segment, we have gotten a lot more precision, a lot more comfort with our numbers. And notice, it's roughly all a wash, very close still as well. So folks, that just about wraps up our segment here on the revenue segment buildup. The key notes here were several things. Number one, at the end of the day, everything still boils down to growth rates and margins. It all still boils down to growth rates. You still have to grow something, sales, number of candy bars you sell, whatever. Then you will also have to uh, be mindful of the fact that there might be extraneous items that you want to exclude, such as the foreign exchange. And it will be easier to do that and more transparent if you had the full buildup as we did as well. But at the end of the day, the numbers are still going to be fairly similar to if you just applied a percent growth rate, assuming you had some very good, nice, solid historical trends to use. Again, we are done with this segment. Let's take a short break. And when we come back, let's go ahead and look at our next tab, the depreciation schedule. See you in a little while.